Hey there, I'm Cyberchroma, and today I will be teaching you how to set up and spawn UI objects to create this setup for buying objects and removing them. This idea was suggested by Reddit user Lemming1607. This intermediate tutorial assumes decent knowledge of Unity, but some relevant tutorials on the topics we will be skimming over will be in the description. Ready? Let's get started! Alright, before we get too deep into things, let's quickly create the four shape setup. So, let's make some shapes, starting with the cube. Let's then move our camera forward a bit, and, while we're at it, let's change the background color to a dark blue. Then, we'll move our cube to the top left. Next will be a cylinder, which will be moved to the top middle, to leave space for the orders panel we will create. We'll turn it a bit to make it a bit more interesting. Next will be a flat plane, in the bottom left. And finally a sphere in the bottom middle. Then we'll make an empty game object to store our shapes under, and name it as such. Now, I have already made a few folders for the things that we will be making, and in the materials folder have created four materials for these shapes, so let's drag them on and give them some color. Now, let's make the panel that our orders will be shown on. We will create a UI panel. Let's move it over to cover the right side of the screen, and change its tint color to a less transparent black. As well, let's change the canvas size so that it will scale with the screen size. Let's rename it to Orders Panel. Now, let's create a title at the top by creating some text. We will then change the text, make sure it is a child object of the orders panel, recolor and resize it, move it into place, and rename it. Now that we've got the basic stuff out of the way, let's move on to make some fancy buttons. We will first make a button to buy one of our objects, so let's create a UI button. Then we will move it under the cube. Color it a yellow color, resize it, and change the text. This button isn't in any way functional yet, but before we can make a system for adding orders, we will need some kind of order object to be spawning in. In this case, it'll be our individual list items on the list to the right. Starting with the cube order, we will basically be making a small panel with a text child object. We can do this faster by creating a button and removing the button component, so let's do that. We will name it cube order, move it into the approximate position of where our orders will appear, color it to match the cube's color, and set up the text. Now we will also want a way of removing an order from the list, so we will make a red X button beside the order. To do this, we will create yet another button that will be parented under our cube order panel as well. Let's reshape it into a square shape and move it into position, to the right of our panel order. For the X, we could bring in an image, but conveniently, changing the text underneath to a capital X and checking best fit happens to work just fine, so let's go with that. Now that we have an order object for our cube, we can make it into a prefab so we can spawn it in with our buy cube button. So let's drag it into the already created prefabs folder. Following up, we can delete the version of the cube order in the scene, as we don't need it anymore. Now let's get into some coding to get this order system to work. We will get the cube ordering up and running on its own, then copy them for the other shapes. In the scripts folder, let's create a new c -sharp script called Order Manager, and open it in Visual Studio. We will start by making a bunch of variables for all the information that we need to store. The first thing we will need is a way to keep track of our orders. 
We can do that with an array. We will create a private array of game objects called orders. Next, we will set a max number of orders that we can store, so we will make a public int for just that. In addition, we will need another int, this time one that we will make private, that will track the current number of orders stored in our list. Next, we will need references to the prefabs of the order objects that we will be spawning. We could make four public game object variables for cube order, cylinder order, etc., but let's instead make a public array of game objects called order types that we will store all four types of orders in. Then we will get references to the four buy object buttons so we can disable them when we've hit the max number of orders. To access the button component, we need to, at the top of our script, add the line using unityengine.ui. Then we can make a public array of buttons that we will drag on the references to, just like the order types, called order buttons. Our last variable will be a reference to the orders panel, so that when we spawn the orders, we can parent them under the panel. This will be a private reference to its transform as we will get the reference in code and the transform is all we need. In our start function now, we will set up initial values for our private variables. We will start with no orders, so we will set the current order to zero. Next, we will initialize our orders array with new game object and then the length of the array will be our max orders number. Then we will get the reference to the orders panel. We will do this using gameObject.find, the name of the object, and then getting the transform component. Moving on, we actually won't be needing the update function at all, so we can delete it. In its place, we will make a public function that our buy buttons will call, called order shape and as input, it will take an int that we will call shape num. This will refer to which shape type to order, with zero being the cube, one being the cylinder, two being the plane, and three being the sphere. First, we will spawn the order object, then position it so each button added moves lower on the panel. So, let's instantiate one of the order types based on the order number and set the parent to the order panel. Then we will add one to the order number, which we can easily do with a plus plus. We will then save this order into the array we created, with the position being the current order number. Let's access the order again and move it based on its local position under the panel. Since it's a UI element, we can use a vector too. The X position will simply be zero, the center of the panel, but the Y position will be a little more complicated. The position of the topmost order will be 130, then each one will go down by 60. We can do this by multiplying 60 by the order number. You can use any numbers you want and even make them public variables if you wanted to. Now let's test if we've reached our max order count. Remember that the order number starts at 0 while the max orders start at 1. So let's have the test be after we've added to our order number. With an if statement, we will test if they are equal. If they are, we want to disable the buttons. We will use a for loop to go through each item of the buttons array and disable them one by one. Well, we'll actually use a slightly different version of the for loop, the for each loop. With button order button in order buttons, we will go through the loop for however many buttons are in the buttons array, with the variable order button equaling the next item in the array. With this, we can turn the interactable boolean on the button to false to disable it, which will also automatically tint the button to show you you can't click it. We will deal with re-enabling the buttons when we create the system for removing orders, but for now, let's save and return to Unity to test what we've got. Now, let's assign the script to the button so it will work. We first need to create an empty game object to put the code on. We will also call it orders manager. After adding the script, let's now set up these public variables. We will set the maximum number of allowed orders to 6. 
drag in the cube order prefab as the only current order type, and then set the buy cube button for the only order button. Now let's go to the button and set up the on click event, dragging in the manager object we just created. We will assign the order shape function, and we will leave the input as zero. Let's hit play and test this. Voila! We can now buy a cube and have the order show up on the right. Each new order appears lower and lower. Once we hit 6, the buttons grey out and we can no longer click it. Before we make the other buttons, let's set up the red X's on the cube order. We will need a way for an order to know which spot it is in, so we can move the orders below it up. As well, since the X button is being instantiated, we can't set up the onClick event in the prefab for an object that is not part of the prefab. Not without some more complicated coding at least. Let's solve both of these problems by creating another script on the order prefab itself that we'll call the order manager. In the scripts folder, we will create another script, this one called remove order. In this script, the only variable we will need is an int to keep track of its position. We don't want it in the editor, but we want our other script to be able to access it. We can do this by making it a public variable, and in front of it, adding hide in inspector. If we wanted to do the reverse, and not allow other scripts to access the variable, but still have it visible in the inspector, we can use serialize field. This time around, we won't need start or update, so we can delete both of them. Now we will make a remove item function, which will be public and not take any input. This function will simply find the order manager and call a function on it that we are about to create. We will use find object of type to get the reference, and we will call a function with the same name, with the input being a reference to this game object. That will be it for this script, so let's go back to the order manager. Back when we instantiate the order, we will want to set the value of that order number on the other script. So let's get the reference to the remove order script when we spawn it, and set its order number as our current number of orders. Now we will make a new function to remove an item from the panel and from the list. To match our other script, we will call it remove order, although this time it will take the game object as input. In this function, we are going to loop through the orders list, starting from the position of this order to the end, and move every element up in the list and reposition it in the panel. We will do this with a for loop that will start at the order number saved on the other script, so we will need to get a reference. It will go through this list until the number of orders minus 1. The last item in the list will be a special case that we will deal with after the loop. Inside the loop, we will set the order in this position of the array to the order in the very next position. Then we will access the order number on that order and decrease its value by 1 with minus minus. Lastly, we will change its local position to move it upwards on the panel with the same calculation as before, but replacing the current number of orders with i. Outside of the for loop, we will then set the order in the last position to null. Then we will decrease the current number of orders by 1. Next, we will test if the buttons need to be reactivated. This will occur when the new number of orders is one less than the maximum orders allowed. So we can copy the button code from above, change the comparison to add a minus one, and if the condition is true, we will set the button's interactable states to true. Finally, we will destroy the order game object to get rid of it. This wraps it up for our code, so let's finish making it work over in Unity. Going to our cube order prefab again, we will add the script to the parent image part of the object, so when we destroy the game object the script is attached to, we are destroying the whole order and not just the X. Now we can go to the X and set the onClick event to call the remove function on its parent. 
Testing this now, everything works as we want it to, and we can now add cube orders and remove them, allowing the items below to shift up. As well, when we max out our orders, and our button disables, once we remove an order to go back under our max order count, the button re-enables so that we can click it again. Speeding this up now, we can now copy our buy cube button and move it to be the buttons for the other three shapes, and color and name them as such. On their click events, we can change the input numbers to make them unique on the shape they are adding. Then we can duplicate the cube order prefab and make the prefabs for the other shape orders. For this case, this is simply changing the name, text, and color to match the shape color. Lastly, we can add these new UI elements to our array of public variables on our orders manager, as we did with the cube. When all is said and done, we should now be able to buy any of our four orders and have them show up in order on the right. As well, we can delete some orders, add more, and have everything shuffle accordingly. And now we have made a lot more fancy UI elements and showed off just how powerful Unity's user interface system is and just how much you can do if you know how to use it. I challenge you to make some sort of an inventory system using this setup where you can pick up objects and remove them. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have ideas for tutorials that you want to see, please suggest them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.